This episode of The Minimalists is brought to you by nobody, because advertisements suck. This podcast has bad words. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Minimalist Podcast, where we discuss what it means to live a meaningful life with less. My name is Joshua Fields Milburn. And I'm Ryan Nicodemus, and together we are The Minimalists. Happy anniversary, Ryan. Oh, dude, what did you get me? Uh, it's our 10th anniversary. Yeah, yeah, and so the, the gift for a 10-year anniversary yeah. is... Tin. Did you give me a tin tie clip? I got you tin tie clips. Ten tin tie clips? <laughs> Some really good alliteration there. <laughs> well, happy anniversary, y'all. Uh, this is, we're, we're putting out a bonus episode, so it's coming out uh, today, Sunday, December 13th. Tomorrow, December 14th, marks our 10 year anniversary of theminimalists.com. Wow. It's gone by very quickly. When I stopped to like, think about the last 10 years uh-huh. a lot has happened yeah um but it's gone by so quick that like i feel like i'm gonna blink and i'm gonna be 50 and it'll be our 20 year anniversary i agree it's, it's kind of like the <clears throat> high school reunion you remember like oh the 10 year reunion yeah but i look forward to this one though right <laughs> <laughs> so true so um you and i are going to go in depth this week on uh, Patreon on the Minimalist Private Podcast. For some so, reason, I thought you said we're going into debt this week. No, we're definitely not. <laughs> we are. So, uh, uh, All right, so we're going into debt this week on yeah, Patreon, yes. We did a three-hour maximal episode really breaking down the last 10 years. So if you're interested in that, theminimalists.com slash support. You can check out our private podcast this week. But here on this bonus episode or this extra episode, actually, we have two episodes coming out this week, Why Ryan. trying to be all extra? <laughs> We have two episodes coming out this week. Nice. We have uh, this one uh, on Sunday. And then Tuesday, we're doing a quarantine conversation, sort of amalgamation of some of our favorite quarantine conversations that are coming out. We've done 50 of those over on the private podcast. But you're going to get three of them on Tuesday in one podcast nice. episode, plus some other stuff as well. But uh, before we get into some of our are questions you- that we have today, Ryan, yeah, let's just say that it is... Not just our anniversary. But it now is the time for less. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> it's Hanukkah. Oh, yeah. What'd you get me? <laughs> uh, I just, I'm, I'm re-gifting these tie clips that someone <laughs> gave me. Happy Hanukkah, y'all, yeah. to our Jewish listeners. Uh, by the way, what was you, what were some of your favorite minimalist moments over the last decade? We've been doing the podcast for five years now. The whole minimalists.com for the last 10 years let us know on social media we're at the minimalists wherever you follow us on social media or you can send us a text message as well 937-202-4654 those texts go literally to both of our phones we respond to as many people as we can some of you we even respond to on the podcast speaking of text messages ryan i went out to twitter and i went out to our text message list uh, yes. the people who text us questions regularly and gathered together some questions about our 10-year anniversary. Cool. So I thought maybe we would start with Arin's question. Okay. So Arin wants to know, does it feel like 10 years or more or less? Oh, I kind of already answered that on accident. My answer to this is is yes. It depends on, on the angle from which we look at it. Yeah, it's weird. Looking at it on hindsight or looking at it with hindsight, I totally agree. It's, it's like I said in the beginning, it's like I... It feels like we've done a lot. Uh-huh. So it feels like we've definitely done 10 years worth of work. Yeah, yeah. It, um, it, but yeah, it didn't feel like 10 years. It feels like an intentional 10 years. Mm-hmm. And the, the way I think about it is I can tell you what we did every year of the last decade. Before that, when we were in the corporate world for a dozen years, you can't go back and say, hey, Hey, Josh, what'd you do in 2004? No idea. Right. I don't know how 2004 was different from 2005, was different from 2007. Yeah. It was just one decade of more. I feel like 2004 is, isn't that when you became manager? I don't know. Yeah. That's my point. Yeah. It, manager of what, right? Yeah. Of it, who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> Jay Youngward has a question for us. What, if anything, did you use to believe about minimalism that you no longer do well this one's difficult for me ryan yeah. because the last two months in particular so you and i haven't uh, oh by the way we should say this now this is our 
last podcast that we're going to record in this studio. That's right. We're getting kicked out. Yeah, our, our building is closing that we're in. Yeah. But we found a new studio space, so don't worry. Uh, next year, we, we already recorded a few additional podcasts, so you're going to see the studio a few more times. This beautiful, beautiful studio we've been in for the last three years. We found a new studio space. And in fact, on our YouTube channel, I think we're going to do a video tour of the old space cool. and the new space and us moving into our beautiful new studio. It is aggressively minimalist. Sweet. I even got you a straight jacket. <laughs> Thank it's, you. It's, it's like a padded room. It looks, Man, it's a white padded just, room. Hanukkah keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> it's made of tin. <laughs> tin straight jacket. So Jay Young words question, anything you used to believe that you no longer believe about minimalism. Well, I'm just going to take minimalism out of there for a moment because minimalism has helped free up the space, create some space for me to to rethink about my life, to think about my life in, in, in new and interesting ways, especially over the last decade. However, the last two months in particular, you know, I ended up in the hospital a couple months ago, mm -hmm. October, um, in the emergency room. Now, I haven't been in the emergency room since like the early 90s. I'm mm -hmm. not just a person who goes to the emergency room. Right. And since then, I've done a lot of reflecting on the last 40 years, uh, but the last 10 years in particular. And so what I really like about this question is my answer today in December is different from what it would have been back in September or a year ago or five years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read something that I wrote down for this. And so we can just go through a few of these things. This is probably going to be my longest answer of all of this, but I'm, I'm fascinated to have this conversation with you right now, Ryan, because these are some things you and I haven't really talked about uh, yet. And so this will be the first time we're beginning to even approach these topics. And what I'll say is over the course of the next year, I'm probably going to go in depth on the private podcast on these, sort of try and work out some of these ideas. I'm still figuring a lot of these things out. Mm. And so yeah, what I've noticed is I've had, you know, there was that unanticipated chaos of ended up in the hospital, right? And over the last few months, um, I sort of peeked behind this curtain that was open for me. And I realized that most of life is chaos. And also, this is going to sound like hyperbole, but I, it's, it's really not. I, I'm saying this and I mean it. We've been lied to our entire lives. Well, sure. And, and by, by just about everyone. I think it's because of tradition, though. I think tradition is, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's tradition to just lie to <laughs> everyone. Oh, I, I, yeah, but also like uh, tradition in the sense that we've been acculturated. Right, no, I, yeah. A and so let me just talk about a few things that I understand now that I didn't understand maybe two or three months ago. I now understand that my beliefs, my opinions, and also the methods or methodologies, the modalities, the how-tos, the solutions, whatever you want to call it, those things, my beliefs, my opinions, my solutions, mm. my advice, mm. cloud the truth. Mm. So wait, are you saying that we've been lying to people for the last 10 years? Well, a lie implies intention, mm. right? So okay. no, no, but I am saying I'm rethinking some things that I have, that, that have been what I thought was useful to me, but mm. may have not been useful to me in the past. So mm. l let me say this, um, beliefs, opinions, methods, cloud the truth. Ego, we know ego, it's not a bad thing. I want to be clear about that. It is not a good thing either. That's, those are value judgments, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. but, but ego, also hope, this word hope, isn't it like, that, that's one of the, the nicest things you can, you can say is, you know, in fact, Barack Obama used this on his posters, right? Mm -hmm. Hope and change, mm -hmm. right? It is a good thing, hope, right? Mm. I don't think so. Hmm. I think hope tethers us to a, a future. Mm -hmm. And whenever we're tethered to a future, we, we crave, we're suffering. And so I have been writing about this recently at The Minimalists. You've seen some of the stuff I've put out there. You know, this whole time, uh -huh. for the last 10 years, yes, people have accused us of being monks. Uh -huh. And I think they might be right now. Because this is a very monk-like approach. <laughs> I, well, it depends what you mean by monk, right? Mm -hmm. I think I think that part of that is also a lie. Untethering from any expectation or yeah. any... How about just untethering? Yeah, right. 
I was going to say from any feeling whatsoever, but I know that's not what you're saying. But you are talking about untethering from a lot of different feelings. Let's maybe we call something else. We call it detachment, right? Yeah. yeah. And and I'm talking about healthy detachment. Yeah. Uh, habit change. This is something else that my mind is rapidly changing about. And I know James Clear would not be happy to hear this, <sighs> but I think habits are nonsense. Mm. And I think I've always thought this. And it's just really solidifying in me. Now I'm going to write about this, so so stay tuned. If you subscribe to our free newsletter at the yeah. Minimalist, you'll be the first to hear about these these things. But I've been writing a lot about, like I wrote about success recently, how all success is failure. Yeah. And uh, you can find that essay. Sean, put a link to that in the show notes if you don't mind. Um, I wrote an essay about attachment called "Letting Go Is Not Something You Do; It's right. Something You Stop Doing." Mm -hmm. And so so we'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. And then what was the other one that was out there recently, Sean? Um, the letting go one. We did the, um, oh, oh, um, uh, success is failure. Anyway, I'll think about it. You can check out the, the recent archives over at theminimalists.com. Those essays are all free to look at. But I'm going to be writing about habit change because here, here's, I think habit change actually covers up problems. Hmm. And, and so I'll, I'll riff on this really quickly. Sure. And then you and I can talk about it more. Maybe we can bring someone like Matt Diavella or James Clear on the podcast, these, these habit change proponents. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can have a healthy discussion around uh, this stuff because I'm open to, to having my mind change some more. But here's why I think habit change is a problem. I think it focuses on the solution and thus doesn't address the actual problem. Mm. Uh, the example I used in that essay that Sean really liked, I used a couple actually, but but one was if the chair that you're, if Ryan, you were to sit in that chair right there. Right. If that chair were to catch fire. Right. You, you wouldn't need to change your habits mm -hmm. to act mm. because you would deal with the problem. You also wouldn't have you wouldn't need the fire safety manual to figure out what to do yeah now you and i have been saying this stuff for years mm -hmm. we've said like hey you're not going to hear me and ryan talk about the 67 ways to declutter your closet right the how-to stuff is less interesting to us because if you don't understand the why to side of things, which is really the problem, mm -hmm. if you don't understand the problem, all of these solutions don't matter. By the way, if your closet is cluttered, you do not have a, a decluttering tip deficit. That's not your problem. Right. Everyone knows how to declutter. The key is why to declutter. Mm. So we've been saying that for a long time. It's just reframing that to understand that like habit change is not as powerful as a deep understanding mm. of what the problem is. Because if you fundamentally understand the problem and the severity of that problem, you understand that chair is on fire. You are going to, you're going to get up. You're, you don't need mm. some five step plan. You don't need instructions to mm. make it happen. You are going to figure it out immediately. You're going yep. to act on it. Yeah, these are all inter interesting perspectives, man. I mean, <clears throat> I don't know if I'm there uh, like emotionally, but I do certainly see the side or the, the, the perspective you're taking. It's not really a side, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a balance. It's like, I mean, think about CPR classes. It's like a paramedic has to go to, you know, classes to learn CPR. There's like a habit that's involved. Someone drops on the ground. Although, I mean, I know, you know, you've, we've got this, there's a whole other conversation about someone being revived and if they need to be revived or not and mm -hmm. how much damage, but let's just leave that out. Let's just talk about bringing someone back. Mm -hmm. If that person doesn't know how to do CPR in that moment, then there could be some consequences for it. It's the same thing with someone who's working out. It's like someone, you know, let's say they're just extremely overweight. Mm -hmm. They want to, you know, they want to eat healthier. They want to exercise. Um, there is a fundamental problem that I'm sure they understand, uh, but without any type of direction, mm -hmm. it just sometimes it just doesn't go as smoothly. I guess all I'm I'm just what I'm really trying to get at is I feel like there's a balance with everything that you're talking about when it comes to hope, when it comes to habits, uh, when it comes to advice, <clears throat> when it comes to these boundaries. I mean, one thing that I've learned over the last ten years is that those things are constantly shifting. So for me, it's not about cutting them out of my life, but it's looking at all of those things and saying, 
are these really serving me right now? Because mm-hmm. sometimes habits can get in the way. So, or, or thinking about doing the habit can get in the way. Sometimes uh, hope, you know, hope uh, hope can turn into hopelessness, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so, yeah, I mean, for me, the last 10 years, the biggest things I have learned is that you can't rely on hope. You can't rely on habits. You can't rely on, uh, what else did you say? Hope, habits. What's the things here? Opinions, beliefs? So yeah, you- opinions, beliefs, uh, boundaries. Yeah, I mean, like those are things that, help the the chaos that we live um well let's and, talk about that word yeah sure. help i don't want to help people um okay expound so i want to speak the truth mm-hmm. right i think one you desi- don't think that helps people i, I don't care if it does hmm. and what i'm saying is uh if it helps people then so be it yeah i understand right it, if it doesn't it's not going to help everyone, but hold yeah. on. The, the desire yeah. to help is all caught up in ego. Mm. The wanting to help someone is fundamentally a part of the ego. And that's, Ryan, that's not good or bad. You got to get that out of your head. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I'm not yeah. saying. No, no, no. Uh, and, and by the way, balance, that's a fancy word for mediocrity. Mm, I, okay, I disagree. But uh, well, I, I see hold what you're on. It's not good. That's not good or bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so balance it's okay to be mediocre it is something if you want to be mediocre at it mm-hmm. right and and you're right um understanding how to do something like the the paramedic mm-hmm. uh, f- basic recipes do help us through elementary tasks right. and that's what we've talked about over the last 10 years is really sharing a recipe right and, and right. so a recipe is a great analogy because if you want to cook a meal Mm -hmm. then a recipe is going to help you with that. Oh, and by the way, if you live in a different part of the world, the recipe is going to have to be cooked a little bit differently. You know what I'm saying? With altitude or uh, whether it's humid, you know what I'm saying? Right, but it's not going to... Regardless of that, my point is that a recipe isn't going to make you Gordon Ramsay, though. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. And and so um, if, if completing a elementary task... And mediocrity is okay for me. I'm a mediocre cook, right? And mm-hmm. I'm okay with, with sure. It's yeah. not. It's not. That's not a bad thing. It just is. I don't have desire to become a great cook, right? Yeah. And so, um, yes, I have. I have the balance there, but like, I, I don't have greatness in in that. Sure, arena. I totally see what you're saying. With balance, can be a form of mediocrity. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, just a couple of the things. Well, the value judgments, and these are some words that I'm really working diligently to actually I've set them down but because I have such the habit of picking them up uh, I I still use these words all the time you and I were having this conversation yesterday so right wrong good bad should shouldn't these are all moralizing constructs Mm -hmm. that they actually prevent me from asking the deeper questions Mm. the questions that matter and I think one of the things I've learned most over the last decade is is solutions are the problem, hmm. and I've really I, I've solidified that over I the mean, last two months. I just blanketed every single solution is a problem. I, solutions are the problem. So, solutions. So, so okay. So I, so that's what I'm saying though. But mm-hmm. like as a blanket statement, solutions in general are the problem. Yeah. So yeah. So so okay. when when I when I look at a solution it's the the decluttering thing we just talked about people sure. focus so much on decluttering that you you don't get to the essence of the problem we're worried more about form mm. than we are about the essence of a thing and mm. and so the form is the the decluttering it's the clean closet it's the tidy home it's the container store it's it's the you know the having the right hangers and the right t-shirt hey what couch do you have whatever well, where'd you get your bookcase from that is form mm-hmm. w- what i'm concerned about is the essence and and so i'm less concerned about the solutions because solutions are just their prescriptions their band-aids they're a mm-hmm. they're but a a opiate in a way mm. it numbs the pain it's funny because i'm trying to take this as in a not good or bad way right right but that's so hard right yeah because everything you're using is like pejorative no, no, no you, we have been acculturated to believe they're pejorative <clears throat> and that's the problem mm. when i say an opiate 
Mm -hmm. That's not a bad thing. Well, I mean, suggesting that... Right. I, I mean, it's suggesting that something is like an opiate is suggesting that you're addicted to something that is really doesn't add value to your life. I, I wasn't suggesting addiction. And also addiction, this is going to sound strange, yeah. addiction isn't a bad thing. Right. Uh, and that is hard to grasp. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to elaborate a lot more in writing on these uh, over the course of the next year, but also having more conversations, yeah. deeper conversations like this on Patreon. Uh, let me just point out a few other things that I, I want to address. We're not going to go through right. them right now. Yeah, man, I really, yeah, I, I really, I'm struggling to get there. I mean, I, I do see the perspective. It's the blanket statements that it's hard for me to, to like get there with just a blanket statement of every solution is actually the problem or any solution is actually a problem. Right. And so, yeah. so here's what is, what is then, I mean, it becomes a semantic game, right? But really what I'm saying is extent, yeah. we focus on the solution. And when we do that, we lose sight of the problem. So that I get when we, when we spend too much time, but that's what I mean by a problem. Okay. Gotcha. A solution. That's a problem, right? Mm -hmm. Again, not good or bad, but like a solution to, we just had a call yesterday with, uh, uh, with our publishing company uh -huh. about, you know, how we're going to, uh, it, it just stuff about the book and stuff about the documentary. Uh -huh. Those are solutions. To what? To, uh, I don't know, to, to making sure that this is going as smoothly as possible and, and all the ducks are in a row so that when the book comes out, people know what to expect. Uh -huh. we're, we're setting expectations for people Okay, where we are planning, uh, different communications mm -hmm. leading up to the, to the launch. I mean, those are all, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying, I'm just trying you to get to name a problem. So you're actually, you're illustrating my point here is that when we're focused only on solutions. Oh yeah, there is. Oh yeah. The solutions we have is no problem, but it's a, but it's, but it is a solution. A solution to what though? It's a solution to, what are you, so, what are you solving? This is my point. Solutions rarely solve anything. Uh, but it does prevent if we didn't do if we didn't have that call and if we didn't do anything leading up to June, I guarantee we would look back and be like, oh shit. I didn't say don't do anything. Right. What I'm saying is don't but, focus on actually not, uh, not let me stop. That's now I'm I'm giving advice. I don't want to do that either. So <laughs> so No, I'm just trying to get where you're at with the solution. Yeah, because I'm, it is a solution to if we don't do something, then like if we don't do what we we're planning to do uh -huh. come June, we would really be like, what, what just happened? But I'm not saying don't do anything. What I'm saying is when, here's a good word for it. See, here is a useful word for this conversation. Um, Your face is useful. <laughs> here's a useful word for the conversation. Understanding. When you have a, a true understanding of whatever the problem is, mm -hmm. the solutions appear. Mm. But when we start looking for solutions, five step methods, what are the seven habits of a highly effect effective people? Yeah. These, the, these don't do us justice yeah. because they, they skirt the problem. The actual mm. problem. But when we have a, a fundamental understanding, and this is, by the way, this isn't me saying you should do something. You I don't need to do. I'm not talking to you. I'm saying oh. to the people at home. Oh. I'm not saying you should do something that you shouldn't declutter your closet. Of course, uh, it makes sense for many people to declutter their closets. What I'm saying is what makes more sense is having a fundamental understanding of why you're doing it. I totally agree with that. Uh, all right. So let's say someone finds out they have type two diabetes Yes, and their doctor is like, look, you have to stop eating sugars mm -hmm. uh, and you have to exercise. Mm -hmm. If you don't do those two things, sure. you're going to have type two diabetes permanently. And we're going to have to like, you know, give you mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. I, I can answer this, but Ryan, in a contract, we call this an opt out clause. What does that mean? Uh, where, where you're, you're finding a way to opt out of the actual discussion. Oh no, no, no. I'm trying to understand. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a fundamental understanding of the solution is the problem. I think what you're trying to say, I, I wanted to hold my tongue enough, but I, I, I think what you're the better way to say <laughs> Thanks, Jordan. what Translate you were for me. saying is the solution is often a distraction. 
No, mm. the solution is fundamentally a problem. <laughs> and, 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 well, and, and when you say right. when you Thanks, say Jordan. better way, that 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 also becomes a, a value judgment in a way. Yeah. And so yeah, I'm I'm just trying I'm just trying to I'm, and, and maybe I'll read some of the stuff you write, or actually feel free to send me some of the the I know you've been reading a lot of monks and, and Buddhists and stuff. Feel free to send me that. I'm just trying to like in that I'm I'm trying to look at how someone with like type two diabetes. Well, I, I can let me let me talk to that right. Sure. And so if you understand the the what is the solution there for them? You, what, what, do they, need, they need insulin. If someone maybe? has ty- if someone has type type two diabetes, they have uh-huh. one of they have yeah they have a few options: uh-huh. exercise, change your diet, or uh, yes, they can start taking insulin. Right. Or there's like hemoglobin A one C drugs they can take, so mm-hmm. like they can start doing synthetic stuff, mm-hmm. or they can start doing natural stuff. But the bottom line is, is if they do nothing, they die. Yes. So right. the problem is the problem is condition that is dead someone has to change what they're doing right so i i yeah so i uh, do you need me to expand anymore no, no, no. Okay. let's say let's say fundamentally mm-hmm. diabetes is not good or bad from a moral perspective right there diabetes okay, yeah. diabetes is not immoral to it have just is dying isn't good or bad it's what happens we all die eventually yeah dying can be a phenomenal thing um and and so we we can talk about that some other time but yeah. i'll just briefly address the di- diabetes question. The point of what I'm saying here is if you understand what the fundamental problem is, is it's not just diabetes. That's a label, right? right. The fundamental problem is a series of habits that have led to a decline in health. Yeah. And if you understand that intimately and everything that's behind that problem, the problem behind the problem mm-hmm. The solutions won't matter because if you understand that problem, mm. you're going to f- fix the fix is the wrong word. You're going to change your state based on a deep understanding, not based on a how many people do you know that that change their life off of a seven step program long term. It just doesn't right. It, 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 that doesn't help. What does help? Wrong word again. Um, <laughs> What what is illuminating is the the understanding, and that's if you're in a twelve step program, it's mm-hmm. a, a fundamental understanding of the addiction, which is the problem in your life, mm-hmm. not the steps that take care of it. Yeah, we got a lot more to talk about. But we got some more questions here. Let's. Uh, <laughs> our friend T K Coleman uh, sent us a question on Twitter. You guys are more popular than you were ten years ago. Well, maybe Milburn is. What are some adjustments in your lifestyle that began, that being popular has challenged you to make? Okay, so let me read that again. What are some adjustments in your lifestyle that being popular has challenged you to make? What's one thing about being popular that you once believed but now realize is a myth? What's one thing that hasn't got any easier? That's a lot of questions, TK. Yeah. We love you. So we'll go through these real quick. Some adjustments to your lifestyle that being popular has changed you to make. Um, Here's a secret. Yeah. If you ever get famous look like every other long-haired bearded white guy and no one will ever recognize you (laughs) that's what i've learned blend in people recognize my forehead even when i'm wearing a mask (laughs) it's uh it's unfortunate yeah no i i mean i haven't really changed my life i i I take pictures with people a lot more now and and Mm. so that can be i still give hugs uh, yeah yeah i i mean i i do that as well um I mean, you know, with permission, of course. Yeah, yeah. And and even now during these times, I'm like, hey, I'm typically a hugger. If you don't want to hug, totally understand. Happy to wave at you from six to seven feet away. I've had people turn me down with the, like, no, I'm social distancing. I'm like, all right. Yeah, yeah, of course. Your loss. (laughs) (laughs) So is there one thing uh, being popular, uh, about being popular that you once believed but now realize is a myth? Uh, What's one thing that hasn't gotten any easier? I mean, I don't think things change that much. It's just like, so Ryan, you and I were popular before we started The Minimalist because we were, we led teams of people. Yeah. It, that's popular. You, you're you're, you're famous. So I managed 150 retail stores at uh, my peak of the corporate world. And I say peak in quotes there. Um, and during that time, we were really popular to those the yeah. people who worked in those stores. For I, sure. You were famous to the people who worked in those stores. Mm. This is not different from that now, except I just don't know the people who approach me until I get to know them. Yeah, I really don't. I don't feel like life is any different. <clears throat> I mean, it's better in the sense that like 
my actions align with my values and beliefs. It has nothing to do with being famous. But it has so. nothing to do with being famous. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm happy, but it has nothing to do with, like, I couldn't even tell you any amount of followers we have on anything, on any platform. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. It, it, it's not relevant for you. Yeah. I, and to be honest, I don't feel famous. I mean, people will recognize me. Yeah. Um, well, and, and because fame is like, you, it feels ubiquitous. We, we don't have that. Yeah. 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 Brian Walker has a question for us. What podcast episodes, essays, live events are you most proud of? Oh, let's start with episodes. Okay. Because okay. that's different than live events. Yeah. Even though those are technically episodes, but they're live episodes. So uh-huh. let's just talk about straight up episodes first. What's, what are your favorite episodes? Your favorite is, is, a, is a better way to put it because he said, are you proud of? And I try not to be proud of these things. Uh, uh, and I fail uh, at that sometimes. Um, so, oh, that, that was the other essay, right? Success is failure. The solution is the problem. And then letting go isn't something you do. It's something you don't do. Yeah. Anyway, uh, in terms of essays, those three I just mentioned are the three I'm, I've most, uh, I, are my three most favorites of recent memory. Yeah, man. I can tell like you, uh, <clears throat> you are going through something kind of exciting right now, man. Like really letting go of outcomes and um, I don't know, man. Well, it's, it, but it's funny though, cause like, it's uh, like, I feel pretty chill all the time. Yeah. Like I don't really, well, I aspire to have your level of, 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 but, but I do attach to some certain outcomes. Right. Yeah. And, and so I, I don't aspire. Actually, that's, that's the, no, I the wrong framing. Saying. But yeah. what I'm saying is that I, I see that and I'm like, oh, Ryan has a healthy level of detachment from certain things, from other things you, you, you don't obviously. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, and so, uh, yes, the, we we have this new film coming out. The trailer's out right now, by the way. Uh, Lessisnow.com. You can find it. Heck yeah. The film is called Less Is Now. It comes Dude. out on Netflix January 1st. They got from Matt Diavella. I know. <laughs> he did it again. It's so Even though so people good. will give you and I credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> Diavella did it again. Yes. and yeah. um, But I don't have... So before, I would have had some sort of attachment to an outcome with that. But we made that, and now it's it's going to be out there on January first, mm-hmm. and that's wonderful. And and I felt compelled to do it, but I don't I don't have an attachment to any particular outcome with that. And by the way, Netflix helps with that because they don't share the specific numbers anyway. So right. what if I said, well, I need all one hundred and ninety four million Netflix households to watch this. That's my outcome. Yeah. Well, I couldn't even prove it either way. Yeah man, and maybe this is an offline conversation and you let me know. But speaking of the outcomes, like with the book, mm-hmm. you've been able to let go of any outcome with that. Yeah. yeah or like, so, or maybe you're working towards it. Well, yeah. And, and so this is something I'm saying. Because I don't have an, ex, I don't have an expectation for like book sales, but I do have an expectation. And maybe you can help me let go of this during this podcast mm. of the effort that we as a team, including with our publisher put into making sure that this book reaches as many people as possible. I think teams are crap too, but we'll talk about that <laughs> on a different podcast. Um, and uh, I mean, I really want to dive into that. So, yeah. but so let's talk about, so we have a new book coming out uh, this summer. It's mm-hmm. called love people use things. And you and I, yeah, I have to have a healthy detachment from this one. Here's why, because as uh, my, my brain is updating, mm-hmm. I, I start to look at the things that are in that book that isn't even out there yet. And what I'm are you like, on now? iOS like 12 dot <laughs> something? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I'm a Samsung. It's a uh, 73B <laughs> Quirks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> These terrible uh, model numbers. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, shout out to our Android users. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> no. Anyway. So the uh, outcome. Yeah. yeah. So here's I, the thing. Like, I have to be t- detached from it because... If any, th- if I aspire to do anything, it's to think differently from my previous self until, mm. until I get to the fundamental truth. Mm. And I think there are a lot of truths in this book, and it's our best written book. It Ooh. It, it contains. Um, Ooh, that has resonated with me. What's that? The, the truth. Fundamental part? truth. Yeah. Because if you can live a fundamental truth, then. I do see where the solutions start disappearing. Well, let's talk about that real quick. So a moment ago, I talked about beliefs were something that I'm beginning to change. Yeah, for a decade, you and I have said, well, make sure you, you well, this is, and we give advice, which is uh, 
crap. And, and so like, well, I don't want to keep giving advice, right? I want to, I, I'd, instead of giving advice, I'd rather speak the truth. Sure. And if people get something from that, now you and I have said this for years, if they get something from our recipe applied to their own life, great. great. Yeah. But I don't want to say you should take my recipe and do something with it. Right, of course. And the same is true with the letting go. I'm not saying you should let go. If you decide that's something you want to do is let go of some outcomes, then so be it. If you decide you want to cling with uh, abandon, then so be it. Yeah. And, and what the thing I've learned about attachment is attachment always equals misery. Mm. Always. There, someone reached out to me on Twitter recently yeah. and said, well, isn't there, uh, what about healthy attachments? And, 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 no, I agree. And so my, my thought is, well, what, if you, what if you change the word attachment? Instead of attachment, you said clinging because it's the same thing. Yeah. What about healthy clinging? What about, because clinging is mm. craving. Craving is suffering. And if you're suffering, what about healthy suffering? Well, that, that doesn't, that's counterintuitive, right? Yeah. It's oxymoronic. Yeah. And, and, and so I'm not saying that suffering is bad. I'm not saying attachment is bad. I'm not saying they're immoral things. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that if you don't want to get dragged, you better, mm. if you don't want to get drag, dragged, let go. You can tweet that podcast, Sean. It's good. It makes uh, me think about like, uh, like someone who has maybe like fallen in love, they get attached, and then that person they fall in love with um, does whatever and like breaks their heart. Yeah. Suffering. Uh, it's it's interesting because like I, I don't know if I've been there personally, but I've seen people where they will then find another relationship. Yeah. And then they, they'll ruin it because they refuse to get attached and they refuse to like let themselves be involved with that person because they're scared of getting hurt. And then eventually... Uh, the person I'm thinking of specifically was able to like basically accept the fact that I got one or two options. I can like live a, in a relationship that I really just feel okay with, or I could risk it all, put it all on black <laughs> and fall in love again and be attached with the, mm, that's not love with the, um, with the possibility of essentially getting their heart broken again. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not saying attachment is love. No, attachment's suffering. Yeah, it, 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 attachment <clears throat> prevents one from truly loving. Okay, that's that's going to be a deep conversation. <laughs> but yeah, it, w it will be. I mean, I yeah, because it's because it's like with Mariah. Do I need Mariah to be happy? No, but God, dude, life is so much better with her in my life. Okay, yeah. and, and, and I am attached to living a very a meaningful life. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do one more question here. Let's see. Let's uh, what what looks good, Janine? Yeah, let's look at Janine's question. All right, let's look at Janine's. When you look back at yourselves in 2010 and compare you to yourselves now, what's the biggest difference as individuals and as the minimalists? Well, it's by far my hair. <laughs> yeah, look at pictures of Ryan from 2012. <sighs> it looks like my son. <laughs> if you want to see my kid all grown up. <laughs> uh, young Ryan plays self. <laughs> um, Actually, we we in the new film uh, Less Is Now, we had to have a young Ryan for one of the recreation scenes. What was his name? Jet. Uh, he looked like a young Ryan. Yeah, they did, did such a good job where you were painting with your father. You played your father. Yeah. yeah. Which you kind of. I mean, you look like know. if your dad. You look like the movie star version of your dad. <laughs> Sorry, that's Eric. The best. That's the best insult I've ever gotten. Wait, no. Nothing is the best and nothing is insulting. Yeah. That was a very appropriate comment, Josh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about this. Uh, uh, compare yourselves to, uh, Compare yourselves from 2010 to now. First I mean, off, Janine, comparison is the killer of all joy. I think comparison's a... Uh, <laughs> I think it's a it's a sort of low grade mental illness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so I'm not going to compare myself now to then. I mean, obviously, uh, I I know more, um, but it's it, we certainly can't equate the two, right? Because mm -hmm. we are radically different people from what we were. And I don't know why this is. Mm -hmm. And Sean, you, you can maybe talk to this. But in fact, our, our maximum episode this week is called, it's three hours long. It's called As the Decade Fades mm -hmm. because uh, 
my novel that I wrote in my mid twenties was called As a Decade Fades, and I actually finished it when I was twenty nine. And at twenty nine, ten years ago, a decade ago, and now I'm at another point where a decade is fading. Mm. I'll be forty. Another decade fades. Yeah, and so the sequel. And so here we are. We've had this decade of less, mm -hmm. right, uh, mm -hmm. of 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 the minimalist stuff. But now, as I go into this new decade of my my forties, I've I'm beginning to to realize that what is what matters to me is fundamentally is the truth mm. and to get there i i find it necessary to untether and also the loving thing that we mentioned earlier and we've got to do a whole episode about this ryan mm -hmm. about deep love <clears throat> i i think that it is not possible to truly love someone mm -hmm. if attachment is involved <laughs> And it's funny how you're really attached to convincing people that attachment. Oh, I don't want to convince you. <laughs> I, I absolutely don't want to convince you. Okay. Uh, I, I want to speak the truth. Right. And how and, attached you are to speaking the truth about attachment. <laughs> <laughs> you're very attached to that right now. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I am, I continue to pick things up. Right. Sure. And, and that's, you know, that's the story of our, the last 10 years, really, man. We've just been picking stuff up and putting it down, and, yeah. and and so what I'm really trying to do now is put those things down that aren't serving me. In fact, do the opposite. I think beliefs. So I, that, that's the beliefs thing I was going to say. For the last ten years, we've said, well, yeah, align your actions with your with your values and beliefs. Hmm. No, 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 no. I don't have advice on that anymore. But I can say this. Here's an observation about my my own life. Beliefs simply cloud the truth beliefs do not require the truth mm. beliefs aren't wrong we all have the vast majority virtually everyone has yeah. their own beliefs mm. but i'm working to detach from those beliefs to mm. let go of those beliefs mm. because they might prevent me from seeking that which is true mm. Ryan, we've got a bunch of listener tips to get into today. Also an added value segment. Just a quick reminder cool. to join us on the Minimalist Private Podcast this week. That's right. We release a second private podcast episode every week on Patreon. That's one free minimal episode every Tuesday. You're actually getting two minimal episodes this week for free. Uh, so the minimal episode, that's the one you're listening to right now. Plus a completely separate long form maximal episode every Thursday, which means that if you're not a private podcast supporter, you're literally missing more than half of our show. And that's not good or bad. <laughs> you're just missing out. And uh, that's yep. not, you're, you're allowed to do that. Absolutely. So visit theminimalists.com slash support to subscribe and get your personal link so that our private podcast plays in your favorite podcast app. It's cheaper than a cup of coffee and it keeps our show 100% advertisement free. That's theminimalists.com slash support. Ryan. What else you got for us this week? Well, Josh has finally started his OnlyFans uh, account. <laughs> 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 and that's where you get the other half of uh, the minimalist's uh, 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 creations. No. Well, I would say other one third. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Uh, no, I got here for us some voicemail comments and tips from our listeners. Let's check them out. Hi, this is Jenna from Salt Lake City. I just had a quick comment about your last episode about giving and gifts. As someone who likes to make things as gifts for other people, I really appreciate um, how you guys approach the thank you very much. This is so much time that I'm not going to use this. Would you like it back? I think that's probably, probably the best way, at least I've found, to handle gifts that other people give me that I can't use. Or for other people to handle gifts that I've made for them, but they aren't going to use. Um, it's very thoughtful, and it respects the time and energy that was put into the gift without um, accepting the, the guilt or the necessity of keeping it. Hi, my name is Stephanie. I'm calling from Michigan, and I'm calling with a comment for um, two, maybe three suggestions. The first one is there's a website and an app called Think Dirty where it will list ingredients of makeup and kind of give a clean score based on their chemicals and everything that's inside them. Um, so if you're looking for a clean alternative, you can scan makeup products that you already have and kind of either score. If you're looking for more um, 
better alternatives, maybe better ingredients, they'll give you alternatives listed, and then you can actually shop right from their app as well. Um, my second suggestion would also be they have called Good On You. Um, it's where they list um, ecologically responsible and animal-friendly um, alternatives to makeup and clothing. So you can search on their website if you're looking for, you know, lipstick, primer, foundation, everything like that. And my third suggestion would be, it's my own little personal rule, is I typically have one quality makeup item for each, you know, specific area. So if I'm looking for eyeliner, I have one quality eyeliner. If I'm looking for mascara, I have one mascara tube at a time. So this helps to cut down on my makeup. That way I don't have, you know, 17 different eyelash and um, eyeshadow palettes as well. All right, y'all, for our added value segment today, we're going to play you out at the end of this episode with a song, Don't Yell at Me podcast, Sean. Uh, shout out to, I think it's Amanda on... IG Instagram. Uh, she sent me this song and said, "Hey, this is like a a minimalist punk song." Oh wow! And I listened to it. It's a, it's a band called Valley Heart, and the song is called Crave. Oh, it's from their album Everyone I've Ever Loved, and so the song is about craving. And really, that's what our work has been about. And especially, I think over the next decade, we're going to be talking a lot more about the fundamental problems like craving. Mm. And so we're going to dive a lot deeper with you all. In the future, I, I I could see next year in particular. We got this film coming out, this book coming out. It's going to be sort of a victory lap of our last decade. But then, as we as those things come out, that's a summation of where we were. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited about where we're going mm. because we're going to speak the truth. We're going to have some difficult conversations. I think that stuff will start on on Patreon because it's hard to have some of these conversations. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to arguing with you about some of it. No, I, dude, these are great convos. Man. No, I agree. I agree. And really, like, I want to get there where you're at, dude. And the only reason I bring up the, what did you call them? What clauses are they? The opt-out clauses? Right. I mean, I bring up opt-out clauses because I want people to understand uh, there's my attachment to wanting to for people to understand, right. but no, I, I have but attachment too. I'm, I just, I'm, I'm I just don't want to, <clears throat> I just know to every rule there's an exception. And the more there are exceptions, then it starts to become less of a rule. And that's where I'm trying to get to, like, am I thinking of exceptions or am I actually, like, I'm trying to get to the rule is really what I'm trying to well, say. I, I think rules are crap, too. But we're going to have to table yeah, it's, that, it's right? A, it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. Um, yeah. But, uh, no, man, I, I look forward to having these conversations. And there's something else I was going to say that I forgot. Continue. Well, we got a right here, right now segment. We should talk about what's going on in the life of the minimalist. We already alluded to this, but uh, less is now. The trailer is out there right now. Lessisnow.com, you can find it. Uh, Stay tuned. We're going to do a launch party in January. So the film comes out in or on January 1st, New Year's Day. Check out the trailer right now. And stay tuned. If you're on our email list over at theminimalists.com, we're going to do an online launch party. We're also going to do a uh, socially distanced in-person screening somewhere. Details uh, coming on that soon. We also might have a few socially distanced events in January as well. Details are forthcoming. Make sure you're on our email list over at theminimalists.com. Uh, or you can be on our text list as well, 937-202-4654. We'll never send you spam or junk or advertisements, but we will let you know what we're up to. You can follow The Minimalists on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And apparently OnlyFans now, at The Minimalists. <laughs> OnlyFans.com <laughs> slash The Minimalists. <laughs> Don't do that, please. I won't. Uh, come see one of our live podcast shows. Visit TheMinimalists.com slash tour to find a city near you. If you have a question, comment, or minimalism tip for our podcast, email a voice memo to podcast at TheMinimalists.com. You can comment on this episode, YouTube dot com slash the minimalist if you want our show notes in your inbox sign up for our email list over at the minimalists.com you'll also receive the simple sunday emails all the essays i've been writing recently you'll get those for free in your inbox the minimalists.com and uh, i hope you really enjoy this song from oh hope that's the wrong word Oh, See, I'm still detaching from these oh my, things. It's, it's it's funny how semantics are. We're acculturated, right? Yeah, culture is a giant what, problem. By I, the way, I remember what I was gonna. I agree. Uh, I uh, remember what I was gonna say, because for the last ten years, to say that we haven't been speaking the truth, it's almost like. Uh, I didn't say that, by the way. Right, but, but to 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 be like, oh, what we're gonna start doing is speaking the truth. But for the last ten years, we. I would say we've been truthful. Uh-huh. Um, 
But our truth has changed, I guess. Or the perspective on truth has changed? I don't think the truth changes. Well, no, no. I'm sa- but, but for you to say, like, you know, we're going to, you know, we have a lot of exciting things coming up. We are going to focus on speaking the truth as right. if we haven't been focused on speaking the truth. No, no. I, I, I have been, but not to the extent I'm going to be. Mm. And so there are, there are layers to this, right? Mm. And so there's a truth beneath the truth, beneath okay. the truth. And, and it's, the, it's the problem behind the problem thing, right? Mm. And so when your car breaks down, mm-hmm. you, can, you, know, you, you, you can figure out how you're going to get it to the gas station. That's right. one. But fundamentally, there's going to be a, an actual problem that we need to address once we get it to the service center, right? Mm. And so what we've done is, is we have been speaking the truth over the last decade. What I want to do is get to the, the next layer. The truth behind the truth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I really do. No, I get that, man. Even with the car analogy, because it made me think like, you know, let's say your, your tire pops because you didn't change them. Mm-mm. Like there's a, fun, there's a truth under the truth of like, you've got to change your tires more often. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Well, here, here's a song called Crave from Valley Heart. It's from their album, Everyone I've Ever Loved. And if you leave here today with just one message, we hope it's this. Love people and use things. Because the opposite never works. Thanks for listening, y'all. We'll see you next time. Every little thing you think that you need. Every little thing you think that you need. Every little thing that's just feeding your greed Oh, I bet that you'd be fine without it